With bodies of water large and small, Minnesota is known as the land of 10,000 lakes. Each winter the temperature drops and a layer of ice forms stretching across the landscape. At the surface, life seems frozen in time, but plunging into the dark abyss, this ecosystem is very much alive. These fish, at the chain of lakes just outside Minneapolis, include far too many common carp. In the 1870s, the U.S. government, at the request of its citizens, brought the carp from Germany, stocking our waterways with the fish. A costly move people would soon regret. All the lakes were going green, the other native fish were disappearing, native plants, and immediately everything went in reverse and the government was told to go backwards and try and remove the pesky things. Dr. Peter Sorensen studies common carp and other alien organisms, both at his University of Minnesota lab and out on the region's many lakes. His interest lies in understanding invasive species, their effects on the environment, and how to control them. An invasive species is what an ecologist would call an ecosystem engineer. So they effectively change the ecosystem they're living in in such a way where it becomes more um, hospitable for them and less and less inhabitable for native species. So the common carp, for example, they essentially turn the ecosystem upside down. And they're a large fish. They can grow over a meter long. 561. They know what they're doing, why they're doing it and this helps them become so invasive and so successful in our lakes. When we see groups getting together, they're having a little carp party or something, then we like to sort of sabotage that. You gotta know where your enemy is. We're trying to get that lake down to about 25 carp per acre because below that level, they don't damage the ecosystem. For years, Carp management relied on merely removing fish from the lakes, an endless process when faced with the carp's considerable fertility. Sorensen and his team have found the need to look beyond each lake to the entire watershed, the rivers, streams, and various tributaries that comprise a broader system of waterways. If they can cut off the carp where they breed, they can better control the population. got to look, as you would with human disease too, is what's the cause? Where is it coming from? Don't just treat the symptom. Don't just remove the adults. Go to the source of the young. Sorensen tracks adult carp using radio tags and collaborates with commercial fishermen to remove the fish. The work we do in the Sorensen lab, it's about demonstrating a framework for invasive species management that works. We advocate for a holistic, science-based approach. The adult carp are smart and long-lived. We just started asking basic questions about where are they, how fast they grow, where do the young come from. It's not their fault they're here, we brought them here. So I think I have a great deal of respect for an animal that's that successful, has that much fun out there, lives that well. It's very interesting to find out what it is that makes a carp a carp, and then hopefully we can turn it against them a little bit because we don't want quite so many. With continued efforts, Sorensen is confident that these once pristine waters can be restored so that both recreation and previous native species can once again thrive. I think it is important to restore the natural level of these ecosystems. We have kind of a long road ahead of us in terms of tackling this carp problem. The effects that they have are pretty devastating. The cost of fixing it is trivial compared to the damage that's being done. It's all part of living on the planet responsibly and enjoying living on the planet and leaving it for others.